Thank everyone for being here today, those uh, the participants and those in attendance. Um, we're here for a simple reason. First, we're not here to argue about the professionalization of massage therapists. We all agree that they need to be professionalized. What we are here to do is to basically state unequivocally that locking out of local government authority on land use issues has resulted in the proliferation of massage parlors fronting for prostitution. Our neighborhoods and communities are bearing the burdens of the state-sanctioned front. The passage of the law in 2009 was well-intentioned, but locked out local government, local leaders, and neighborhoods from being able to have a voice in their location and being able to shut down houses of prostitution when they are discovered. We've seen an explosion in the number of these businesses, and more importantly, a large jump in the number of investigations and actions by law enforcement to stop prostitution in a number of these parlors all of which cost taxpayers money, funds that should be used for other vital services. So with this sunset review, what we're going to try to do is bring balance back to the situation that we see on, on the streets. One that allows for those who are legitimate massage th therapists to continue to practice in a professional manner, and then at the same time allowing the law enforcement the ability to shut down massage uh, parlors that are houses of prostitution. Um, I brought a few folks with me, as all of you can see, to speak on the need of reform of the law and the, from local government perspective as well as law enforcement. So I'd like to introduce each of these uh, speakers. Well, first, we have Mitch McCann, uh, Police Chief of the City of Simi Valley, uh, Kristen, Christina Lawson, Mayor of City of Walnut Creek, Dr. Kubishian, Kubishian, Mayor of the City of South Pasadena, as well as Assembly Member uh, Chris Holden, uh, AD41, cover South Pasadena and Pasadena. First, let's start with uh, the police chief. Thank you. Good morning, as the assembly member mentioned. My name is Mitch McCann. I'm the chief of police of the Simi Valley Police Department in Ventura County. We're a city, we're a city of approximately 126,000 residents. Today, I'm speaking to you on behalf of the California Police Chief Association. <coughs> I'm also the chairperson of the CPOA, California Police Officers Association, Law and Legislative Committee. And today I want to talk to you about an issue that's affecting all of our communities. I'm simply one person representing a number of agencies throughout the state, but we're all being negatively affected by this important issue. Due to the negative impact that SB 731 has had on each of our communities, we'll be asking today, both California Chiefs and the League, that SB 731 it sunsetted on January 1st of 2015 and that it's replaced with legislation that actually works for cities and for law enforcement. Fortunately, SB 731 was a pilot pro program and I give credit for the state for trying to do something with that. Unfortunately, the program has not worked. As an example, I'd like to just mention the statistics from our city. Our city, prior to the passage of this bill in 2008, had 18 <coughs> massage establishments. As of last count last week, we're up to 47 massage establishments, and those numbers grow pretty much each week. And like most every city that you see behind me or with us today, we have more than one massage parlor per square mile. Uh, the vast majority of these advertise online. You can quickly go online and see illicit activities that they're, that they're asking for there. Once again, we were full support of the professional massage establishments. It's simply these ones that are proliferating out like rabbits that really are there for other purposes. And for law enforcement, it's very difficult for us to, to enforce uh, any kind of laws there, and the things that we do enforce really have no effect. The people simply go from one massage establishment to the next. Uh, owners are replaced. Um, and I think if you even look in the background paper uh, that that's going to be provided later today for the assembly, they mentioned that that the C, since CMTC has taken over uh, enforcement is that one of the things they say is that they don't have to do any enforcement and consequently in the last five or six years that they've been in charge of uh, enforcement of this, they've revoked 100 certificates and disciplined 11 certificate holders in the entire state of California. Uh, that's minuscule and I would bet that most of those are in the last six months or so now that, as we get closer to the sunset of the law. The complaints we receive from the community couple with the sheer number of locations popping up, they, they make it a burden on police resources, and they also start to force out other businesses just because people stop going there. And some of our small uh, strip malls, we have now as many as five massage parlors in one little small strip mall, and the rest of the legitimate businesses seem to leave from there. So on behalf of Cal Chiefs, uh, we ask that, that the assembly does allow this to sunset. 
If it must continue, we ask that they authorize local governments to regulate massage therapy establishments if the majority owner is not certified or registered. We also ask that the authority, that cities enact, are able to enact ordinances to regulate massage businesses that fail to obtain uh, the proper permits. And that we authorize cities to restrict, stop, restrict massage establishments from being able to open at the same location where another one has been closed due to CMTC or other local jurisdiction violation in the previous 12 months. We also request that they add law enforcement positions to CAMTC's board. And wherever possible, the owners of these illegitimate businesses should be held responsible for the conduct of their employees. Thank you on behalf of Health Chiefs. Good morning, my name is Christina Lawson. I'm the current mayor of the city of Walnut Creek in the San Francisco Bay Area. And my city is an example of why SB 731 is, has been a complete failure. Since it was enacted back in 2008, the number of massage establishments in the city of Walnut Creek has grown significantly, and it continues to grow week uh, over week in our town. Cities throughout California want SB 731 to sunset on January 1, 2015, and have it replaced with legislation that actually works for cities and for law enforcement. Cities need the authority to apply reasonable regulations to these businesses. CamTech is a nonprofit that instead of operating like a regulatory body, it acts like an association that provides benefits for its members. For the massage therapy industry to be truly regulated, CamTech's role should be replaced with a state agency. The problem is that the owners of these massage therapy establishments have no liability or responsibility for what occurs inside of their businesses. If CamTech revokes a therapist's certification, the business itself remains open. As a city, our hands are completely tied to deal with these individual businesses, and that needs to change. The owners themselves need to be liable and have a stake in the game. It's time to let SB 731 sunset and create new legislation that empowers local governments to regulate local massage establishments and therapists to stop the proliferation of illicit services being offered in many of these businesses. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I want to thank the League of California Cities for uh, convening this press conference to call attention to this very important issue. I am Dr. Marina Kubestri. I'm a practicing family physician and the current mayor of the city of South Pasadena. South Pasadena is located six miles north of downtown Los Angeles in the west part of the San Gabriel Valley. Um, prior to SB 731's enactment in 2009, South Pasadena had four massage establishments. Now we have 19 massage establishments in a 3.4 square mile area. Um, six of these massage establishments advertise openly in, uh, uh, on websites and in adult entertainment sections um, and are, we suspect are, are houses of prostitution, uh, if not human trafficking. Um, as we have heard, many cities are suffering with this problem. I call it an epidemic of um, illicit massage establishments and human trafficking. Um, we would like SB 731 to sunset as well for all the reasons you've heard, and we would like it replaced with some common sense legislation that benefits the state um, and the cities um, and allows our regulatory bodies and, and our uh, police department some regulatory teeth in order to deal with the illicit ones. Um, I want to tell you that, um, that our um, historic town of 25,000 people, top performing schools, and our own police department has not been able to be successful in dealing with a lot of the illicit massage parlors, despite sting operations um, where we have arrested um, the certi CAMTC certified massage therapists for prostitution. This resulted in some suspensions of license um, and um, However, with uh, owners change very hands very quickly of these establishments, and then um, the new owners will claim not to have known or not to be able to take any responsibility. Um, these sting operations are costly. These quarterly inspections of the 18, soon to be 19, parlors are costly. Arresting the women involved for prostitution, I believe, doubly victimizes them and does nothing to punish the solicitors and the people that profit the most from these illicit businesses. As a small town, we're unable to throw money at this problem. Our police department is tapped dealing with many other issues like the spike in property crimes due to prisoner realignment. We do not have the resources, nor frankly the desire to take on an organized global syndicate of human traffickers and prostitution so that the certain massage um, industry franchises, even though they're legitimate, 
and they provide a welcome service. They do profit handsomely by exploiting this regulatory vacuum created by SB 731. They wish to locate and keep commercial corridors um, without any oversight, um, which would allow us to weed out some of the illicit massage establishments. Cities do not benefit from uh, the services as from a tax-based perspective. Um, in South Pasadena, on March 5th, our city council voted unanimously <coughs> to place an urgency moratorium on new and expanding massage establishments. We uh, had a subcommittee of our council that studied the problem um, very extensively. We involved community members, some of which are here today. We have two community groups represented here today, standing up here, um, because it's a very huge problem. We heard the outcry from these concerned and outraged residents, um, local merchants telling us that our key commercial corridors suffer from blight as a result of the proliferation of illicit massage parlors. Legitimate businesses do not want to locate near these establishments. Our residents have told us that they avoid patronizing businesses near these certain massage parlors uh, because they feel unsafe. Parents are angry that their children from nearby schools have to walk past these particular or certain establishments with their predominantly male clientele. Um, CAMTC does not fill the regulatory gap that has been left by SB 731 and the subsequent amendment of AB 619 in 2011. Um, I will tell you that this is a board, uh, uh, it's a nonprofit board, not a state agency, made up 95% of people from the massage industry who actually stand to profit from the very same regulatory void that this bill has created. The large numbers of certificates, thousands, issued by CMTC lack quality control um, as far as training in the schools from which the um, massage therapists come from, and it lacks regulatory teeth. Look, I'm a physician. It took me about 12 years to have a license that's highly regulated and very expensive to maintain. Today, it's possible for anyone over the age of 18 to spend 200 hours and pay a nominal fee, receive a certificate that places them in the same category um, under local regulation as me and other professionals like accountants and dentists. Furthermore, my professional license is regulated by a state agency with a high level of accountability. Um, not so for CAMTC. Our police chief, Art Miller, who couldn't be here today, sits on the CAMTC board as one of the 5% of the board members who are not from the massage industry. I can tell you that he is in full support of our urgency moratorium. It's finally, if the intent of SB 731 was to reduce prostitution, which is how it is written, we are here to tell you that it has been, as my kids say, an epic fail. SB 731 was an experiment, well-intentioned perhaps, that made a few people very wealthy, but has hurt cities, families, merchants, business districts, and created a market that victimizes women and girls right here in California. It's time to end the experiment and let this bill sunset returning home rule and local regulatory control of massage establishments back to cities where it belongs. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think you've heard, my name is Chris Holden. I'm a assembly member that represents the community of South Pasadena. I'm a former council member myself, and I understand all too well how proliferation of these types of uses has a dramatic and negative impact on the community and the people uh, where they have to live around them. Certainly we've experienced it uh, over the years and the same type of thing with liquor stores where they start to proliferate in communities and bring down the quality of life. So is the case with massage therapy. And as you can see uh, from the maps that are shown, it's, it's highly unlikely that that many massage therapy operations are needed in any one, any one particular neighborhood within any one particular community. And Clearly, this Senate bill, was, its intentions were, were, were noble and correct and trying to regulate an, an industry. But what has happened is quite the opposite. It has created an opportunity for so many uh, institutions to start making their way, businesses to make their way into communities that bring an intention that is not uh, honorable and noble and in the best interest of, of the cities. And so it is important that through these hearings that uh, the business and professions uh, committees will take from the Senate, also the Assembly, that we have an opportunity to hear the testimony and understand that this is a real problem and that we need to do something different. We need to figure out how to properly represent and regulate 
uh, the good businesses, the good performers, those who are trying to do the right thing and run a legitimate business, and those that are not, that we shut them down, and that we allow cities to have that right and that ability. They're the, the local uh, leaders uh, who are elected, duly elected, to represent the communities and the people that live in, in many of these small communities, many small towns that are really strapped uh, with the resources and the financial ability to really go after, as the mayor pointed out, uh, these types of businesses, and they should not have to. And so we think it's important, uh, and I certainly support the idea of returning this, the, the local jurisdiction, the home rule, the opportunity to place legitimate massage therapy businesses within a city to make sure that they have the proper zoning and they're located in areas that are appropriate, and that law enforcement is then empowered to go after the bad actors. I think this is an important time, an important time to hear the testimony, and I'm certainly uh, compelled to understand that we may look to see this bill sunset and to come back and try to come up with something that's more appropriate and empowers our local cities once again. Let me uh, thank all the, the speakers for participating. I think this highlights the need to, um, to address this important issue. Um, I spoke with the, the chair of the Senate BMP committee. She wanted me to stress that the committee does share the concerns of the different communities throughout California and the issues that they, they are struggling with. Uh, one of the, on a, on a strange little fact, I ran for office in 2012, first time, got elected, and this was an immediate issue that came to my attention after a series of raids that were conducted in Eagle Rock and my district along the Colorado Boulevard. 26 different massage parlors in that part of my district, and just one about two miles strip. It's an important issue that we need to uh, address, and it's been very frustrating for the city attorneys, law enforcement, and local leaders to uh, get this under control. Um, might be a little bit ironic, but my old campaign office was, um, uh, I had a storefront as a campaign office, and it was just reopened as a massage parlor. Uh, <laughs> this is something that we do need to address. That's why we build in sunsets to understand if something is not working, let, can we try to fix it? And if we cannot, do we have to start over? And that's the question that's before us today. So I'm going to um, see if anybody has any questions and take any questions. Obviously, uh, illicit sex acts didn't start happening in massage parlors in 2009. Above and beyond restoring this local authority for zoning ordinances and that type of thing, are you contemplating additional ways for law enforcement in cities to crack down on this type of thing? I'm going to let um, Kristen Kopicki with the California League of Cities answer uh, a few questions. The land use and zoning. Excuse me, can you step to the mic? <clears throat> The land use and zoning piece is really key to how we would be able to enforce and shut down some of these establishments. The law prevents local governments from regulating massage establishments that claim to only hire certified massage professionals. We can only regulate them to the extent that we uniformly regulate all professional services, which includes every profession <coughs> under the business and profession codes that requires a license, license certificate or registration. Um, we believe if we have the ability, when someone comes in with a business license, to apply reasonable regulations with regards to that establishment, we actually have something when they violate the law to pull away from them and close the establishment. Because the current structure is set up where only CamTech certifies the individual employees, not necessarily the owners or the businesses themselves, and local jurisdictions' hands are tied with regards to regulating the establishments, um, we have no ability to close down those illicit establishments. So that is a key component. We also believe that having the owners be responsible for what goes on in their establishments is important because that would happen in any other business setting. Um, and finally, we believe transitioning CamTech away from a nonprofit towards a state agency would also help to regulate the industry. We don't think it has to be a zero sum game where either the state intervenes or local governments intervene. We think there's a role for the state to professionalize the industry and still have local governments be able to regulate the businesses themselves. And one of the, th let's, we definitely acknowledge this has been an issue for years. It's not the first time. I was, I was watching a movie from the 1990s and they were talking about how all the illegal massage parlors and they're always in one part of town. And I think this is, um, so it's obvious that it's been going on for a long time but we actually passed a law that made it worse. So we have to take it, um, we have to uh, roll back that, uh, that problem. 
and then start from hopefully where we were and then figure out new solutions to address illicit, illicit massage uh, parlors. Yeah, uh, those in the industry say that you know prior to SB 731, uh, cities would put very onerous and expensive uh, uh, provisions on conditional use permits to allow massage uh, therapy uh, offices to open. It would be zoned only for areas where there are adult entertainment zones, which are typically in parts of town that, that uh, the women and women customers are, are generally their customers uh, felt uncomfortable going. What provisions do you think could be put in that would protect uh, a legitimate industry that many people seem to be gravitating towards these days for, for health care uh, from being um, uh, treated like second class citizens by the members of the leading cities? I think, I think it's entirely possible if you look at the law pre-SB 731 that there may have been examples that didn't necessarily allow for full participation of all professional massage services. But I think our point is that SB 731 swung the pendulum so far the other way that we don't have any authority or any tools to be able to address illicit massage. We'd like to bring the pendulum somewhere in between the middle to be able to address this issue and still allow legitimate massage operations to operate. Well, I we guess that's, that's what I'm asking. What, what can you do to get that pendulum in the middle? I mean, what, what, what protections could be in there to, to prevent a, a city that just didn't want any massage activities in this town from, from basically uh, treating everyone like an illicit massage park? I mean, there's a, there's a wide variety of regulation opportunities for local governments. It doesn't have to be of the same. For, first of all, we could regulate any business um, current today. We could prevent fast food places from coming downtown. We could um, prevent 13 Starbucks in one square mile. But in San Gabriel, you have 54 establishments in four square miles. That's over 13 establishments per square mile. And you can't tell me that's all legitimate. So I think that if you look at the statute that says we can only regulate to the extent that we uniformly regulate all other professional services. If you want to say that massage is no better, no worse than other professional services, great. Then take out the word uniformly to all professional services. And as long as we can regulate them as we would any other single professional business, we could regulate them. That doesn't mean we have to pick on them as an individual business. But if we have those regulations with regards to another business, whether that's a CPA or a hair salon or a nail salon or a locksmith or any of the other businesses that are considered professional services, um, we wouldn't be picking on them. They would be treated equal, no better, no worse. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. Thank you.